Hello, welcome to the Apex Networks training for the RMS system. This is part of our online training program developed by Apex Networks to assist you in getting the very most from your software. This short video will cover a recovery job. We recommend you play this video on a separate device from that you are setting your system up on. This will allow you to pause, rewind and keep pace of your progress without having to switch screens. Your recovery job will look the same whether you have received the job via ANS, web portal or you have created the job manually and will essentially contain the same information. The job you receive is divided into sections within the recovery job screen, whether it's recovery, parking, workshop or hire. When viewing a job received by either ANS or web portal for the first time, or if you're creating a new job from scratch, best practice is to start in the top left of the screen with the job details section. Work towards the right and do the same in the next two rows, finishing with owner details. By doing this consistently, you should not omit any details. Along the top of each job, you will see a black band which gives you the recovery job number, its current status, who created or accepted the job, and at the end of the band, you'll see the reminder button, which allows you to add any job specific reminders. To add a reminder, click on the reminder button, which will open a scheduled reminder list. The list could be empty. Click on the add reminder button on the bottom left, which will open your new reminder. Add some relevant text that would prompt whoever is reading as to what needs reminding. Then set your date and time or use the preset minutes shown. You can click on these until they add up to the time you need. Tick the remind me only box if you need the reminder just for you, otherwise the alert will show on all controller systems. If you are reminding yourself to be at scene with a job, ticking here will delete the reminder once the job is at scene. On the left hand side of the job, you'll see a vertical row of icons. At the top are active icons. You can see that the only active one is recovery as it's in colour. This means that there is only a recovery job presently. Below these icons in colour are your available icons. By clicking on any of the available icons, you can create a workshop, redelivery or parking job, or attach a hire or courtesy car to the job. This will keep all details of the job together and they can be invoiced together, separately or even to different people or companies. At the bottom of this column is the charges button. Go to the first section, job details. Site is used when your company runs more than one site and work will need to be allocated to different sites. Account shows who you are doing the job for. The magnifying glass will allow you to search your accounts list for your customer. The house icon will give you account details, including address and contact details. Within this is a useful function called account documents, which allows the controller to look at account critical documents, such as processes, etc. The car icon after will list vehicles that are specifically associated with this account. Contracts will only show when you have multiple contracts with one customer. Next is region. This can be set for price structuring for specific regions such as low emission zones or ultra low emission zones. Next is type where you select from three options. If you select statutory police this will create two invoices. The first for who is paying the statutory charge. The second to cover the VAT for whoever is responsible for the VAT payment. This is usually the police force that you are contracted to. The pre-agreed statutory fees for the relevant scenario charge will be applied. The second is owner's request. This will apply the usual statutory charges in the same way as statutory police, but the VAT will be payable by the owner, insurer or salvage operator. The default setting here is standard and this should be applied to every other job. The next field is order number. This is a mandatory field and is your work provider's identifier for this particular incident or job. For cash sales, it can be useful to use the name of the person booking the job. The second field is provision for a second order number if your customer needs additional work doing. Planned driver is a free text field. This can be used to enter a planned driver if required and it's also useful for other information as it's visible on the main job screen too. Authorization code is where you must enter the authorization codes given by the club or customer to authorize payments for additional services. If there is an envelope at the side, usually with club or ANS jobs, you can click on this to request additional equipment, etc., directly via ANS. Next is job tag. These are specific to your company and can be added to jobs for identification and reporting. 
They're created by your company for any reason you want to tag, such as a waiting PO number. You can also identify them by colour. ROA stands for Ring on Approach. The driver will receive a pop-up on his PDA to advise to ring the customer the amount of minutes entered here before arrival. If the Images Required box is ticked, the driver will receive a pop-up when on scene to remind them that images are required for this job. Booked by is where you enter the name of the customer booking the job. This is usually used for cash sale customers or manually entered jobs. If your company is using analysis codes on a particular sales account, the Select Analysis Code field will become active. Analysis codes, just like job tags, are fully customizable for your business and they can be created in the sales account as required. The biggest difference between them is that analysis codes will be forced on Cleardown and they are a reporting line in recovery data dump reports. The four icons under Extras are for additional services to be added such as second attendance or when a roadside assist job turns into a recovery. The forklift icon is for any specialist equipment used on this job. There is also the facility here for invoicing these costs to another account, such as cash sales. Next is a jigsaw piece icon for any parts supplied on this job, again with the option of separate billing. The bell icon is for tolls, such as M6 Toll Road or Dartford River Crossing. These two have the facility to bill separately. The last icon in this section is FNOL, commonly referred to as FNOL, first notification of loss and is used only by companies working directly on behalf of insurers as a function to give the insurer their first notification that they are likely to incur a loss. The next section is vehicle details. The first field is class. This reflects the details on your rate card for this account and will only select the classes that you have applied on the rate card. Next is registration number, followed by fleet number, which is useful for trailers or bus and local authority customers who only use fleet numbers for reference. Next you will see a magnifying glass, which is used for searching your system for any other jobs with this registration number. And the red car beside this will search DVLA or Republic of Ireland Motor Registration Department for the full details of this vehicle. Please note that as commercial vehicles are sold primarily as a chassis cab, there may not be the full information for body variants, i.e. tipper, box body or flatbed. Next is make and model, followed by VIN number. Then we have colour and odometer, speedo reading. Next is the field for engine. It's useful sometimes to have the engine type entered here. The fuel type drop-down has multiple selections to give a more accurate indication of the fuel used. This is to ensure that you can send the appropriately trained recovery driver if required. After this is trans, and this means transmission type, which can define which type of vehicle attends a recovery job. Next are fields for width, length and height. These are particularly relevant to types of vehicles such as motorhomes, which, although built on the same chassis, can vary massively in all dimensions. The weight of the vehicle, if displayed, will show as KSW, curbside weight, and GVW, gross vehicle weight. The curbside weight is what the vehicle should weigh when it has no passengers, is unloaded and carrying an average amount of fuel. This function is useful when using lighter weight recovery vehicles to give a better idea of a vehicle's realistic weight. It is useful to get your driver to assess the actual load in a vehicle if any. Next is weight and this should always refer to the maximum gross weight of the vehicle. Then we have axle type. This can be a good indicator for some commercial vehicles or vans if you don't have or you are unsure about the weight. For instance, SRW for single rear wheel or SWB for short wheelbase. After this is the number of doors followed by passengers. There are two fields for passengers. The first is adults and the second is children. The definition that we apply between adults and children in this context is whether they require their own seat, either a booster, full five-point harness seat or a baby bucket. If they don't need any of these then they can be accommodated in the recovery truck with the seat belts fitted to it. Underneath is a trailer button. You can toggle the icon to make live. This usually applies to domestic trailers behind cars or vans as the licensing regulations are different than for commercial vehicle recovery with a drop down for load level. Next you will see a priority icon which when clicked on will give a drop down menu giving the priority reason and another field below to add more detail. This will also put an alert on the main job screen so that priority jobs can be seen without the need to open each one. 
Next is an alert for disability, so that the controller can see that there are special needs with this job that need to be taken into consideration and the driver advised accordingly. The third section is main service. This is where you will allocate the job to one of your drivers or subcontract the job to another vehicle recovery operator. If you're doing the job yourself with one of your own drivers, enter their details in here and click save. If you subcontract the job, click on this button here and the subcontractor selection will pop up. Select your subcontractor in the box and then this job can be sent to the subcontractor via ANS when you click on subcontract in the bottom right corner. Here we have a job that has been subcontracted. The supplier will be shown here along with a provision for a purchase order value if there has been a previously agreed cost for this from the subcontractor along with invoice number. If you have allocated the job to one of your own drivers, their name and the truck that they are going to be doing the job in will be here. If you entered your own driver details, they will be shown here. When you hover over the blue man, click on the blue man and it will send the job to the driver. You will then receive a pop-up message confirming that the job has been sent to the driver. Next is the call date that the call was received and this is the job date. These are usually the same unless the job is pre-booked. Next is delay. This is where you will enter how long you have given to attend this job and it gives you the estimated time of arrival. Issued is the time populated automatically when you give the job to your driver. Next is en route. When the driver has issued a job, this icon will turn blue. When it's been received on the driver's PDA, the icon will turn gold. When they have accepted it, the icon will turn green. When your driver clicks that they are en route, the time in the en route box will populate. This can also be done by you by clicking on the clock and adding real time or entering your own time should it be different. Next is at scene. This will populate when the driver arrives at scene and clicks at scene and will trigger the images required on their PDA. The job will turn yellow to show from the front screen that you have driver at scene. Whilst drivers are at scene, they are at the highest risk, so as soon as they have loaded the casualty vehicle and completed the job, they should click the button that shows clear of scene on their PDA. This will then turn the job pink and the controller will know that the driver has loaded and the risk to them has reduced significantly. For a roadside assistance job, clear scene and complete will be the same. This is marked as clear on their PDA and should not be confused with clearing a job down. Complete. This should be entered at the end of a recovery job when the vehicle has been dropped at its destination or alongside clear scene for a roadside job so that the controller knows that they are ready for their next job. Back to base. This is not a compulsory field and will almost always be an estimate and completes the triangle of pricing that all recovery jobs are based on. Base to base pricing, base to casualty vehicle, to destination, back to base. Next to this is a calendar icon and will add or take away dates alongside the times. This can be useful to identify jobs that span more than one day. Next is service. This is the service that you are providing to your customer. The choice is from what you have entered on your rate card. Next is mileage and the first field shows the actual mileage that you have done on this job. The rate card will allow for free miles. The next shows trailer miles and finally given miles. This is what the club or work provider has allowed for this job. Next is time taken. This is used for jobs, usually commercial, that are priced on time rather than miles. The calculator icon is very useful. When clicked on it gives you scenarios for pricing. When chosen it will calculate the time taken. This can be edited afterwards for rounding up if needed. Below the next section is fault outcome details. The next box is the vehicle location. The larger field is for the address and the field below is for the postcode and allows you to search for one by clicking on the magnifying glass icon. To the right of the main field there is a red or green indicator showing whether your RMS system has geolocated the job. Below this is where you can select from addresses stored in the sales account for this job. Destination is the next box if the job is for recovery. The larger field is for the address and the field below is for the postcode and allows you to search for one by clicking on the magnifying glass icon. Next is fault and outcome details. There are two fields for symptom. The first one's default is other. This symptom will only change if one has been added from the ANS standard codes. The field below allows one to be added manually with the symptom being what the customer has reported is wrong or they think is wrong with the vehicle. The next field is fault. And this is what your driver has diagnosed as the actual fault. 
The outcome is what you actually did to resolve the issue. Below this field are three tick box options for repair exclusion, response exclusion, and pre booked jobs. ANS notes is next, and any notes that have come down with the job from the work provider will be here. There is also a button to the right of the text field which will allow you to send an ANS message back to the work provider. Driver's notes is next, and anything here will go to the driver when you send the job to his PDA. Owner details will show the driver's name, company details if it is a company vehicle, and their address, postcode, and phone number. This is the number that you can use for SMS messaging, rescue track, or pinpoint. There is a field for alternative number, which can be useful if there are concerns with reception or phone charge level. There are fields for email address and membership numbers. This is followed by a first contact field. This will auto-populate if the customer is sent an SMS message or pinpoint, but can also be populated manually. At the bottom of this section is invoice notes, and anything entered here will be printed on the invoice when it is generated. The last section on the job is owner details. Next is job notes view, where any job notes should be entered. Once entered here, they cannot be deleted. Best practice is always to use this for any notes regarding the job. To enter notes, double click on the grey screen or click on the history button at the bottom of the screen. The job changes screen will pop up. Go to add history note at the bottom and add free text, then click on add. You will see your message added to the job history above. You will see all of the updated notes here in date and time order. You will see who made the note or update and when it was entered. Manually entered messages are shown in bold text and system updated messages are not. When you close the box, you will see your message appear in the job notes view box and it cannot be deleted. Along the bottom of the job, there is a row of buttons. The first is Reset. By clicking on this, you can reset the job to its original state when it was created and, if it has been issued to a driver, it will cancel it from their PDA. Duplicate. will duplicate the job. Useful if you have multiple vehicles in the same address for the same customer and all you need to do is change the registration number, make and model. Next is the hold button and this will put the job on hold which will turn it green and put it at the top of your job screen. Once you have put a job on hold, the icon will change to remove hold. Click on the button to take off hold. Clear down is next and will only be active when the job has been completed. Once clicked on, it will remove the job from your recovery job screen and will put in the completed jobs list under the heading ready to invoice. Next is cancel. This will cancel the job and the button will then go to uncancel in case you have cancelled by mistake. You cannot delete a job from RMS, you can only cancel and the job will remain on the system as a cancelled job so you will never lose a job. Print will create a PDF document of the job so you can print or email if you wish. Attachments will hold any vehicle condition reports generated on this job along with any images taken or any documents that you wish to attach. The number in brackets will show how many attachments it holds. When you click on the icon, you will see where you can upload a file. History will show a chronology of the job from when it was created along with any amendments along the way, including who did it, the date and time, as well as what was changed. Any additions made in the job notes view section will be in the history as a bold entry and the number in the brackets will show how many manual entries there are. Save will save any amendments that you have made in this job. Save and close will save any amendments and close the job. Best practice is to always close a job this way.